All right, so I'm gonna start with uh, reinstalling the dash here, and uh, I want to reinstall the center console. I want to build the bottom edge of the console. The console kind of just floats, and I just want to finish that edge you know, all the way to the floor, and give something for the console to kind of sit on and and build brackets to. Those are just temporary. This bracket and that bracket is just temporary to kind of position it and get my shifter where I want it. And once I build the build the little ledge for it to sit on. I'll start hacking out the hole for the shifter and uh, get that in there. But I just bolted the dash up first, and I've been body working it a lot. And I got the console over here. Been doing a lot of body work on it as well, getting it nice and shaped up. Uh, still got a little work to do here with the ridges, uh, with the ribs. I wasn't thinking too straight, and I, but I put some filler over it. Just thinking it needed to be done, and I forgot I got to weld the strips of ribs across there. So. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to want to. I don't think making them out of filler is the right idea. So, anyway, we'll get this bolted in and uh, we'll start making the uh, ledge for the bottom edge of this to sit on and uh, and get it started. So this is what I was talking about. I got the console reinstalled, and this gap here is what I want to fill in, and I'll create a little uh, ninety there, or a little flange for this to sit on, so I can just install it, sit it down, and that way I can. This will be part of the carpet, part of the floor, or whatever I do with the floor, um, and be part of that. So I can reinstall the interior and just plop that down on there. I think that's the right way to do that. <clears throat> um, not 100% sure, but I don't really have much uh, other choice uh, other than bringing the console all the way down uh, to the floor. It'll, you know, this is the, this is kind of where it'll end. Uh, so I think it'll be fine. It'll be part of the car and uh, I'll weld it fully and well, I'll weld it in permanently and then have this part removable and I can hide a lot of the electronics and wiring and stuff in there and a uh, nice tidy spot. The only problem I'm having here, as you can tell, it goes down. It's going to almost touch the floor. Uh, well, probably be right in there. So might be right in there the whole way. Yeah, I think that'll work. Uh, back here it gets a little wide because the tunnel sinks in. So I may taper it you know, as I get to the back or something like that. Because that'll be, that part will be hidden by the seat anyway. So, um, But I don't want it to look like I just kind of forgot about it and tossed it in there. But, you know, those are the things you think about. Uh, you don't think about until you get to them and then you realize, hmm, now what do I do? So, um yeah let's get to it i'm gonna get some uh, paper made up and we'll cut that out and see how it looks and then i'll see how i'm trying to make this side out of one piece i'll try to make the back end one piece and then the other side one piece and that way uh because i'm gonna have to if i flange it and i'll make it flat first and then i can flange the 90 and then i can stretch it here and kind of get it to start kicking because it has <clears throat> the console has some hips to it kind of flares out right here and then tucks back in under the dash so I want to kind of follow along with that and uh, just make it nice and like one piece. But you'll have a little gap there, a little line gap. But I'm just standing back trying to look at, make it look sure, make sure it looks like it's flowing downward. I don't want the back of the console to be kicked up. So, uh, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. The dash is coming out pretty nice too. Got a little transition here. I want to tighten that gap up a little bit, but I've got a little bit more shape in here to do. And... Uh, right in there just to get that uh, line nice and uniform um, but it's still it's still a long ways to go but it's really coming along nicely uh, remember that used to be two piece and i filled in the gap there i welded all that up and body filled it that's why i had to do some filler work on it just to get the gap and when they stamped this console all the way down the sides had some ribs in it from where the metal just kind of went wonky they just vacuum sealed a piece of vinyl over it to cover all that up and when i took all that vinyl off you could see little waves in the metal there so it had to be filled in all the way down the sides just to get rid of that um, not sure if I'm going to recover this in a vinyl um, or uh, something I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as coating goes paint um, upholstered I, I don't know um, I like the look of the metal interior but boy is it hard to keep up it scratches and then the whole thing's shot so I don't know, just thinking about it out loud. Um, let's get back to this and we'll stay on task. So I went to Harbor Freight and picked up a drum sander and uh, 
wanted to try it out. I've been wanting to try it out. I've been meaning to get one anyway because I want to strip the whole car down to bare metal and start over with my body work. I was kind of happy to see. I went in there expecting to pay 150, 160 bucks for it, which is normal price. And they had a coupon for uh, um, the tool club that they have and they knocked it down to 115 bucks. So I was pretty stoked about that. So I'm even more excited to try it now. So strip this down and we'll get it kind of fitted in place and then I'll make another one. And hopefully the other side is gonna be a little different because of the way the transfer case tunnel is ex extended up a little bit. Um, so I won't need as much material, but this pasture side, I'm gonna go ahead and get it stripped down and uh, get it marked and I'll put a flange on it and we'll, we'll go from there. So I got a nice, nice, shiny piece of steel to work with. All right, I got it tacked in and uh, I'm really happy with that fit up. It's got uh, a little bit of sink in right there and then backside, but like I said, I'm gonna put the spacers on the top so that'll kind of help even that out. Once I get the other side made, I'll have something to attach them to, kind of like a little spreader bar, or just a top support. <clears throat> and uh, that way it'll, it'll push that out where I want it. I'll strategically place them. Uh, in those spots that are kind of pushed in a little bit because I can I can pull it out pretty easy and uh, It flushes up nicely. So I'll put one in the back I'll probably put a whole panel back here to kind of give it something stru Structure wise because that's where a lot of my arm, you know, is going to be pushed down on um, Yeah, we uh, get the welder turned off and uh, We'll get started on the other side We got the other side welded up as well I'm going to work on the back side here and just kind of get the transition over the hump and kind of get the sides rounded a little bit because the back of the console is rounded and it actually has a little bit of an arch to it. Uh, it's not perfectly flat right there. So, of course, uh, got to make it a little difficult. You know, it can be it can be a square box. That'd be kind of boring. But uh, anyway, I got to get the shape of the tunnel and uh, I've got a little piece of scrap that I just stripped and uh, we'll get that fit it in there and let's see if we can get it trimmed up and get it looking good. All right, shaped up. <clears throat> it fits the back side of the console, uh, formed up pretty good. Uh, it's just simple hitting it with a hammer on the on the vise, using the vise as a dolly. Um, and just coming back and forth, walking back and forth, shaping it up. So it fits in here pretty good. And finishes up the back side of the console nicely. It's not completely squared off. It's not exactly shaped a lot, but uh, it'll look fine. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up having to cut the center of that out because I've still got wiring to pass through there. Really not sure if it's a good idea or not. I may not fully weld it. I'm just going to put a couple tacks on it on the both on both sides and not weld it to the floor and uh, leave it for there for when I start running my wiring more permanent. I'll uh, get to that. Uh, I kind of want to get all the metal work out of the way or the majority of the big big metal work and this was probably one of the last things I needed to do or wanted to do uh, other than the cost, the uh, gauge cluster. Um, I mean, most of everything else is good to go. So, all right, let's get that welded. I'll quit yapping my gums and uh, move on. All right, so I got my wheel uh, that I chose to go with. It's off of a Dodge Ram. It's a 20, 20 inch steel wheel. And my idea is to get rid of the ovals. I've already started doing so. Um, and this way I'll body work it and I just happened to play around and had I was just happening to dig through my shed and found an old hubcap and I actually thought that looks pretty cool uh, obviously the half of the rims missing but um, I could take this rim shell so I put a band on it so it'll go two more inches wider and let me get this outer barrel and I'll try to do this one-handed let's see bear with me all right so there is a two inch wide wheel wider steel wheel and a little hubcap obviously I'm gonna you know, get rid of those holes but it'll be a smoothie <clears throat> I'll body work it and, and paint it black just to get me going down the road I need to find one more. They're actually kind of hard to find. This is a spare wheel off of a Dodge Ram. Um, 
and I don't know how I found one and can't find another one or save my life. I've been looking for weeks now, but I want to try to find one close to close to the house so I can ride and get it instead of having it shipped or you know. I'm sure I could buy one brand new, but this was fifty bucks with a tire on it, so I doubt I could get a better deal than that. Hopefully I can find another one here soon because I need to get this made and get another one made so I can get some tires and get this thing down on the ground rolling around. Um but I gotta go ahead and uh fill the rest of these holes in. And then I'll go ahead and I wanted to do that first so I could have access to smoothing it out because once it's down in here, it may be a little more difficult to smooth and grind flat and body work. Um, but yeah, we'll get it banded and cross my fingers, this works because I uh, got a lot of time invested in it. But I've seen tons of videos online of people doing it and it's not exactly the first time it's ever been done. So I feel pretty confident that I, I can knock it out. So let's get going. So I made a little pattern out of cardboard, flipped it in there, and we've got these chunks of steel I'm cutting out, and uh, I'll use the pattern to shape them. So we'll get to it. We'll get to change this blade out because I'm about used it up, and I get a flat wheel on here and start cleaning these up. Uh, I forgot I wasn't filming, so I'll go ahead and film the last one, I guess. Uh, what I did was cut out these little pucks or blanks or whatever you want to call them, and I curved them a little bit because the wheel is uh, curved slightly. They're not perfectly fit because as I'm going along uh, welding and grinding on them, I just kind of tune them up as I get to each hole. See, that one's not quite flush down here at the end. So I'll touch that in with a grinder. And uh should just be right there is what it looks like. Thing's super hot. Obviously, I've been welding on it. But let me get that ground off. I got it ground down and uh, flush. Just barely flush there. And I'm going to tack it a few times, and then I'll work my way around it. It's got a slight bubble in it. Uh, you probably can't see too much of it, but it is there. Kind of hard to film with one hand and weld with the other, but I did it. So now it's time to grind, and I doubt you'll want to see any of that. So I'll just get to it, and I'll come back when I'm done. All right, so the wheel is all cleaned up. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's going to get body filled anyway and worked over and smoothed up. Um, it is going to be a pain in the butt to get in here either way. So I sanded it with the DA and got it smoothed up. I got the band on and got the edge beveled. I may need to add a little more bevel to that. Um, just so I get a good penetrating weld. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and start welding that band in there and... Uh, move forward with this wheel. So let me get that uh, bevel ground in there and we'll get set back up. So I got the, the ring, the middle part of the ring, the widening band welded to the outer rim shell. I uh, went ahead and got a pretty good weld all the way around. I can see on the back side where I got my heat pretty good and it uh, penetrated really well. Had a little bit of a gap here that I didn't like, but I welded it up. It is what it is. I'll grind it and uh, dress it. I'll probably come back through here with a grinder and just a flat wheel and cut into that groove and then fill it with weld and then smooth it over just just to uh, give me that added extra insurance because um, I've never done this before and I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not. I've seen, seen all kind of different ways of doing it. but So that's the way I've decided to go with it. Um, but yeah, we'll get the other part of the rim, the back part of the rim barrel up here. And we'll start welding that bad boy in, in place. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have a whole wheel. So my plan is to make a uh, kind of a jig to, to be able to clamp this wheel down. This is the back side of the wheel. And the outer barrel, I'm going to start welding here all the way around. So I want to make sure it stays nice and tight and clamped down. So I'm going to use this square that I have, this one by one square tubing. And I'm going to put a piece of steel plate over the hub here and just bolt down using this little bolt and this lug nut hole. And I'm going to weld another clamp. Um, I may not even weld it. Just drill some holes to the top side. And I got some, I got some two plates, steel, flat bar. And just drill some holes in it and run some bolts. Or hopefully I can find some all thread. I don't think I have bolts that long. But just to give it some clamping force so that it doesn't walk around and uh, want to move on me while I'm welding and sliding it around. So. All right, so I got my plates made up. I had to drill about three extra holes per plate because I wasn't, didn't measure, I was just eyeballing. So I put my, 
I saw that square stop and then we'll just clamp that down and hopefully that'll provide enough pressure that uh it'll hold that in there nice and firm so that should be nice and snug enough to give me the peace of mind but that is down as far as i can get it i mean it looks to be a consistent gap all the way down and i think i've got enough bevel in there to get a nice good bead of weld so I think it is time to send it. Just got my bottle of gas filled up for the welder. I'm ready to roll. Today, I'm probably gonna wear some gloves because a lot of welding yesterday gave me a little suntan or more like a sunburn. A little, a little extra protection on my arms or my hands at least. Let's burn, baby. Okay, that is welded solid. Leave the uh, clamp on there for now. Make sure that thing cools down naturally because it's pretty hot. And even with blowing air on it, I didn't blow a lot on it. But, uh, well, it's not terribly hot, but it's pretty warm. So just leave it clamped. No, it's not going to hurt anything to do that. I'll touch the touch these welds with the grinder just to get the just get the sharp edges off the top. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's inside the rim, uh, inside the tire bead itself, so not a big deal. Just get them cleaned off and uh, coated, nice and coated with paint, and uh, plan on body working the other side of the wheel to kind of get it smooth. It's not going to require a ton, but I'm gonna smear some mud on it and uh, we'll do that. I'll probably end up doing that at my garage because can do stuff like that at my house I don't have a welder at the house so so I can do stuff like that at my house I'll take it with me and do that on my time off from work and uh, instead of traveling out here to do some work and uh, help keep the project moving along too so uh, let's pause on this and I'll show you what else I got all right so uh, just moving along trying to just bounce around from part to part of the car it needs a little bit of attention here and there um, I picked up some headlights. Now these were headlights that were given to me by my uncle. He just he had gotten them on a trade or somebody gave them to him, and he was just passing them along because he has nothing to go on. Uh, I don't particularly like the light itself. It doesn't really go too well with the vehicle. Now it's a cool light. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with that. It would look cool on a certain vehicle, um, but I think it just I think it takes away from the front end of the car. Uh, too much. It's too modern. Now I know the car is customized, but when you put a light on a car, it kind of, to me, you got to have the right light. You can't just slap a light on there and expect expect it to look right. Um, and I've been looking and looking for some uh, aftermarket. These are for a Jeep, obviously, because Jeep still uses old round headlight like the uh, old school seal beam. But I found some where a guy traded his stock Jeep headlights out for some of these. Uh, some of these uh, wild looking lights. I don't like them either, but it's not my car. So I bought his OEM stock Jeep headlights. Now some of these headlights, they have a little Jeep where the little deflector is inside the light. They actually have a uh, Jeep grill in there, which I, saw, I started looking and I was like, I don't like that because it looks like a Jeep. So I finally found a set that I, I didn't know. I just did a little looking around and found a set that has just a round, you know, stock round and it's a fluted headlight. It's a pretty solid uh, plastic headlight lens. Should last a long time. And I just noticed there's a little spot right there. If I wanted to put a LED blinker in there, I probably could. It's probably made for draining, keeping the lights out of it. So it uh, looks like they came off of a JK Jeep. Um, he even included the light bulbs, which is cool. But what I'll probably do is end up upgrading the LED light bulb. And that way it'll give me my modern lighting, um, but still keep the factory style look and it'll bolt into the car so i don't have to modify go figure the first partly the first part i've bought for the car and i don't have to modify it but um it's the nature of the bill so i'm pretty stoked about them and uh, we'll get them on the car i just want to show you how they look i've had these for a while these are just some turn signal lights that usually go like that in the side markers um on your uh, side mirrors on the car i'm going to modify this grill bar 
to have that curve in it and kind of dive in at the headlight. And I think that will give, you know, the person, uh, the, the other vehicles on the road, uh, a little bit of a look, a little bit of a view of my blinker turn signal there. And I think that will help somewhat. I really don't care. I'm mainly going for what this looks like in my vision of it. Um, but I think just an afterthought that may help as well. But um, I think I'm going to have it dive in right there on the end. So I'm going to have a little slightly modified. I'm going to just run a curve cut in that. And I'm going to slowly hammer over the edge and have it dive in right there. And I'm hoping that that lands kind of where that headlight is and looks good. Because I don't know, and I just want it to look a little different. I don't, I don't know if this look is right. I don't, I don't know. Something's different about it that I don't like and I can't figure it out. But I'm going to try this light. And this came just off of Amazon, a little cheap knockoff. Uh, don't even know. I've had them for probably a year and kind of forgot about them. But uh, I think I want to run it kind of like that and have a taper. I may do that heavier taper like that. Um, try to get them as flush as I can get them. Little tab there, and I'm going to have to figure out a way to attach it on that end. I may have to make a little clip or something that screws to the head, the bar here, the green the grill bar. I'll figure something out. I'm going to stick them in there and see. Uh, because I got rid of the bumpers, which has the blinkers in it, obviously. And I think I like the fact that this is just nice and clean and plain. And um, no obstructions, nothing to catch your eyes, just clean. And that's kind of where I want to go with that. So we'll get to it. We'll cut it. I'm going to start rambling and uh, see what we come up with. I made a profile of the light. And that's the shape I came up with. So I'm going to lay that right there. And cur cut just this little corner out. And I'll, I'll make a pattern of that. And uh, do the bottom side. And probably end up having to box the end of this and make a little notch for that tab to sit in. So click and then try to pop it in there somehow. And hopefully that'll work out. I'm um, going to try to cut that with this little saw and see if I can keep that piece. And uh, try to keep that and flip it and put it on the bottom side. But if not, I'll make a pattern of it once I get it out of the way. So. <laughs> All right, so I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, went ahead and made a channel, just a little U channel. It's a little tight um, for the light to slide right in right now, but I think what I got to do, <clears throat> I'm just going to try it and see if it works. If not, I'll cut another piece out and start over, but I'm going to end up stretching this top edge anyway. And I think as I work this piece and then end up trimming it down to where the final level is, which is that, I think eventually it's going to open up to where it'll slide in and be tight. I don't know. If that's supposed I mean, it probably shouldn't be that tight it should just fall in because it's going to need body work and paint and all that adds up so i'll probably end up just using this as my test piece to see if i can actually get it to shape and uh just make another one so i'm going to sink sit it in the shrinker stretcher i just realized it ain't gonna fit because it doesn't work that way i don't think i can get it in there i might be able to i'll try to work it like that <clears throat> Stretch it a little bit and see if I can see if I can get this uh, to pull it out. I need to put a mark on it first, and we'll we'll go from there. I'm gonna mark it out here uh, where I feel like I need to start my curve. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave a little bit down here on the end. So I can have that tab fold up. So it starts to curve where my cut is, round about here. Stretch this line out. Curve down and follow that contour. Doesn't take much. I don't know if I can get that bite in there like that or not. I want to do it like that on the top. Oh yeah, it moved it. So pretty pretty quick little curve uh, right there. <clears throat> it doesn't take much. One good little stomp on that because of the leverage I have. It'll, it'll stretch the poo poo out of it. Use this as a workbench. Let's see how close we got to our. That ain't too too bad, really. Um, my mark's way back here. So right there, it just shows I got a lot of extra. So I'm going to back my shrink up, my stretch, I mean, right in there. 
I need to stretch a little more right here. I like that curve. Let me back it up a lot because, I mean, I got extra. extra. I may come back a little bit more right down here. All right, cool. You can all literally watch it move. So kind of eyeball it and use that as a gauge. So I'm liking that pretty good so far. Back it up. Where did I go? Yeah, right there. Matches pretty dang good. And it already opened it up just from forcing the jaw in there. It opened up that flange a lot. So I know that, that light will fit in there now and I can just do the same up there. Let's see what I can come up with. Let me see if I can put that light in there. Even I know there's tape on it, but uh, it's not terrible. I'm still going to keep working with it. Let me see if I can uh, open that up a little more. So my plan, like I said, is to cut that line is going to be my cut line, that length. And then this will be the base. So it's opened up quite a bit already. And I hope to get that down in there. Even with all that crap on the outside edge, it's still pretty close. Uh, I think I can make it open and make it work and still won't look terrible. I think it'll fit nice once I cut it. Now, unfortunately, my finger break doesn't have a finger that narrow. So, I have to go the old school method here. All right, so I went ahead and uh, got both sides kind of caught up and cut open. And I went ahead and shaped another panel like I did um, the other one, the other side. I made this one a little bit different. I didn't quite cut as much away from here. Um, the other end, I got to add some filler uh, to kind of get it right. So I have a screwdriver. I keep putting shit down, getting where I put it. A little aggravated. Oh yeah, coming out pretty good. Oh. Get a little air on that bad boy because it's getting a little warm.
All right, I took a little Dremel and so I got the, uh, use my Dremel tool to kind of hog that out a little bit and get it to better shape of the, uh, the actual light. And I really think that turned out nice. Um, obviously it'll come back this way a little bit more. Um, once I put the notch in it and I'll have a little hole there for, drilled out for the wires to go through and uh, probably end up, like I think I said that um, before, I'll put some double-sided tape on it, stick it to it, um, and it'll look pretty good. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just the way I should do it. Just trim those notches out and double-sided tape it. Why not? What's to stop me from doing that? I just have a little tiny hole for the wiring. Stick it through there. I'll have to cut the plug off anyway because I don't have the... You know, they send you this, but what does that go to? It doesn't go to anything owned. You know, these are just generic lights, so I, I guess you'd have to change the plug out for what your plug is anyway. But uh, I like that a lot. I think I'll just cap it <clears throat> and uh, take that notch off, take both notches off, and just stick it on there with some double-sided tape. That 3M stuff in, is really good, so I don't have any problem thinking it won't hold it on there. So. I think that's what I'll do. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut that off, get the light back up there, remeasure it, and cut that off, and I'll start working on capping it. Get a tighter fit. That's a pretty good eyeball right there. It lands right where I want it. I'm going to trim off a little bit of excess on this edge, just right here, so it'll fit back in there flush. All right, this caps in. Got the one made for the other side, and got my line cut or line drawn for my cut. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and weld this guy in, get it ground down, then I'll go zip cut that off, weld that, and just shape it up, smooth it out, and it'll look really good. So I went ahead and did a little loosely assembling of the front end, and that's what I got as a finished product. Now it does need a little bit of tweaking. Uh, this light's not quite fitting the way I want it, so I may do the just a little hammer work and uh, get the metal to move around a little bit. They're just kind of sticky taped in place right now, but uh, that's the look. Uh, that's the final look right there, other than a grill behind that floating bar. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm glad I went ahead and did that because I ran across the lights and I was like, man, I bought these like a year ago and I don't want to use them, but now I think it looks good. I think that was really good. Um, the, the mesh grill is going to stop you know, right around in here. And then I'll have a little panel behind uh, the headlight on both sides to kind of mimic the grill. But I think the grill bar, the grill should stop on both sides of the uh, headlight bar there. Or the, it should stop right in there somewhere. We'll see. I'm still looking for the right mesh. I have a mesh, uh, a pattern in mind and a size in mind, but I haven't quite found it yet. Uh, I'd like to do it out of a piece of aluminum just to keep it simple. But uh, so far, there's the front end of the car right there. So I'm digging that. All right, so uh, I'm gonna end this week's video here and uh, got a lot of progress made. We got the whole front of the car done as far as uh, the shape, the initial shape. Of course, it's gotta be dialed in um, and, and finished, but uh, pretty pretty much overall, it's the it's the final product as far as what, I, what I'd like to see on it. Um, and I got the seat mounted, so I got the, also got the wheel cut up and uh, done. I uh, still got to do some body work on the wheel, uh, which is kind of weird to say, but yeah, I'm going to smooth it up and, and, and make it nice and dress the welds and all that. So I'll do that off camera. It's just a bunch of grinding. Um, overall, the front end of the car to get it done is what I was uh, intending to do this week. Um, picked up the new headlights, got my turn signals in and the grill bar modified. Uh, now I've got to get a mesh go behind that and uh, that will pretty much wrap up the, the nose of the car. It's a pretty dramatic change from the little old Falcon. Uh, that, you know, originally had the the uh, aluminum grill in it, and it's just, you know, it's an, it, they're not necessarily plain Jane, but it's just a base model car, and I wanted to dress it up a little bit. So still got a ton of body work to do. Um, sanding, sanding, sanding. But uh, it's, it's coming along really nicely. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching Big Lake Hot Rods. I really appreciate the support. And uh, we're closing in on 300 subscribers, which is pretty wild um, and pretty exciting, I guess, for that. So you know, see a little, little growth in the channel. And if you guys want to comment on the, what's going on with the build, if you got any questions, um, I know this may not pertain to everybody's uh, project, but, you know, techniques and things of that nature that uh, 
somebody may pick up on or uh, somebody may need to sh want to share, you know, a different way of doing it. I'm open. I'm open to suggestions. I don't mind. It is what it is. That's why I'm sharing. Uh, thanks for watching Big Lake Hot Rods, and we'll see you next time.